another question assalamu alaikum sir wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi i am tas tasnim huda bangladesh a student i would request you to give a lecture or a session on how to do business giving minimum time cause it will help many dais in bangladesh as they as here to be a full time dai is not very easy task it is very difficult to do a job and give more than 50% of time to dawa please answer my question i have been texting for 2 years but didn't get a reply brother tasneem from bangladesh wants me to give a lecture on how to do business so that people can learn to do business and they can do business and dawa together it is like someone asking me that i have got multiple denomination of notes i have notes of 1 rupee 5 rupee 10 rupee 100 rupee 500 rupee 1000 rupee 2000 rupee i am distributing notes of 2000 or saying bakir why don't you distribute 1 rupee note it is absurd that i am giving talks on dawa the benefit of dawa is unlimited you are telling me to leave my dawa and give a talk how to do business my advice to the muslim brothers and sisters if you want to be a dai you and you want to do business in dawa please don't do i would advise you if you have learned how to do dawa utilize your skills every minute what you have learned of dawa to do dawa not business today in the world there are millions of businessmen how many not hundreds not thousands not 10000 millions for me according to me a dai who is on the trade path on quran and hadith the lowest among the thousands of dai that are there is better than the most successful businessman of the world according to me a dai who is preaching quran and sunna on the authentic path is far superior to bill gates even even to jeff bezos or even to tesla or elon musk for me a dai who is the lowest amongst all the dai in the world as long as in quran and sunna for me is more valuable than elon musk have you got the answer because in my previous answer i said allah says in the quran in surah fusila chapter 41 verse number 33 wa man ahsanu qawlan mimman da'a ila allah wa amila salihan wa qala innal muslimin who is better in speech than one who invites people to the way of the lord who works as he says and says that i am a muslim and a beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the person who allah loves he gives him the knowledge of the understanding of the deen i like to repeat a beloved prophet said the person who allah loves he gives him the understanding of the deen he doesn't give him wealth and allah gives wealth to everyone good and bad people both the wealth so many kafirs have got wealth so many non muslims have got wealth so wealth is not something which is to be craved for what is to be craved by a muslim is deen the knowledge of the deen and the understanding of the deen not money there are thousands of courses on how to become a businessman why do you want me to come down from the level of distributing 2000 rupees distribute 1 rupee why maybe you have a misconception yes you may have heard that dr zakir naik mashallah allah has blessed me i do business as a part time and i told that even in my talk on dr zakir history and i said that yes i spend a few hours a week maybe two days in a month or a few weeks in a year for my business and allah has blessed me alhamdulillah Allah has given me that like among the sahabas we know that abdurrahman bin off may Allah be pleased with him there's a saying that whatever he touched became gold he was expert in business expert in business 
when he did Hijra and when he went to Medina, you know, the Ansar, they gave what the Muhajir want, they gave. What do you want to take? He said, I want nothing. Only show me the place to the market. And he goes there and he comes back with many goods. Allah had given him the art of business. There was a saying, whatever he touched became gold. But when he went to teach people, did he teach business to the people? No. He taught Islam. Do you think he'll enter Jannah because he was a good businessman? No. So you have to understand that money is not the main criteria. Amongst all the important things, the least important is money. Because if I teach someone to do business and he starts making money, do you think I'll get sawab? Most of the people will stop dawa. The dai when he learns how to do business. You know, many a times our beloved Prophet said, I don't fear poverty for my ummah, I fear wealth. Because if a person is poor, he's more on the straight path. It's more difficult for a rich man to go to Jannah than a poor man. That's what the Prophet said. And we see the history of the Sahabas at the time of the Prophet. Did the Prophet leave behind wealth? Did he leave behind gold? What did he leave behind? He left behind Sahabas. And we know the incidents. Hazrat Umar may Allah be pleased with him. When he was Amirul Mumini, when he was the Khalifa, he asked the Sahabas that what would you ask Allah? What would you pray to Allah to fill this room with so that you could spend it in the way of Allah? So one Sahaba gets up and says, I would pray to Allah to let this room be filled up with gold. Hazrat Umar may Allah be pleased with him says, ask for something better. So when the Sahaba gets up and says, I will ask Allah, I will pray to Allah to let this room be filled up with rubies and jewels so that I could spend in the way of Allah. Not on themselves, huh? in the way of Allah. Hazrat Umar says, ask for something better. So they say, Ya Amirul Mu'minin, you say what is better. So he says, I will pray to Allah to let this room be filled with du'ats like Mu'az ibn Jabal. Abdul Rahman went off. So that I could send them to spread the deen of Allah. See, he never asked for gold, never asked for money, he asked for manpower. So I am giving people training how to become da'is, you are telling me to give training how to become businessman. This is the problem. Our deen is very simple. And I always tell, there are many of my students, see Allah has blessed me, Alhamdulillah, and I am very thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That organization started, it was mainly funded by my father for the initial few years and 95% was funded by the family. Then when the budget became big, others started funding. As far as my thing is concerned, my, my parents told me I don't have to worry about my living, they'll take care of it. Within a couple of years, I started doing business and Allah blessed me. We did hijra, we left behind millions and hundred million dollars, mashallah, nothing. We started again, Allah has blessed us again. So this is Allah's niyamah. But I've told many of my students, many of my students, you know, started doing the, okay, now we'll make business with Dawa. We start Dawa organization do business, we'll do this, we'll do that. And they collected money from outside. I told them, don't do that. You collect money for donation, do the work, no problem. If you collect money for business and you promise them you'll give a profit and you cannot do, your reputation will be ruined. And believe me, there were some of my very good students in Bombay and in Malaysia who did not heed to my advice. In Bombay also, they thought, you know, they will make, okay. And then what I'll do, then yeah, maybe good. They're good people. They were not cheat. They were very honest. But they were not businessmen. One of my students in Bombay collected crores of rupees. And what happened? Then he came to me, I'm waiting for the day where I can walk on this earth without any debt on my head. Good guy, honest person, not a cheat, but not a businessman. So why are you shifting from your dawa to business? The people come and I train them in dawa and then they, I said, Baba, I trained you in dawa, correct? I trained you free, right? Now you want to shift from dawa to become a businessman? So why did you come for my training? You let the businessman do business, let them fund you, no problem. The moment you show your ability of dawa, there will be surely people coming and taking care of you. 
Yes, that's an option I give that if Allah has given you the knack and you're coming from a family which is there. I, I do not come from with this family, but Allah gave me that. Alhamdulillah. So my advice is please don't ever venture into doing business. High chances you lose, number one. According to me, 95% you will lose. This is average. You start doing business, you lose. Why simply take the risk? And even if you make money 5% time, I know some guys who are doing business, they start making money, now they are not doing dawah. I won't name them. Popular guys, mashallah, famous in the world, maybe in the second, third level. They start doing business, they start making so much money that they stop doing dawah. Now they may give lecture once a year, that's it. This is what happens. So 95% chance you lose and 5% chance if you make money, 95% times if you make money out of that 5%, you lose dawah. You will get so much impressed with money that you will shift towards businessman and leave your dawah. So you want me to take you from the good path to the wrong path? I'll never do that. I will never. I always advise my student and my audience, please, please, see to it that you concentrate on dawah. I tell my son, I don't want you to be a businessman. I will see to it that I will make a business in which you will be able to survive. By you becoming a da'i is more important. And I am happy that he learned dawa. Even if he learns to become a good businessman and runs the business and makes profit, it's nothing compared to the profit he will get by doing dawa. The benefit that you get in this world and the akhirah by doing dawa is phenomenal. And believe me, even when you earn money, I tell you to die. Once you start earn money, see to it that the majority of your earnings, you give it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you do business, one of the secrets of business of my business is that you make Allah your partner. And when you make Allah your partner in business, you can't make him a small partner. You have to minimum give 51% of your profit. Now how many Muslims have the heart to give 51%? Most of the Muslims don't even give two and a half percent zakat, what they have to give. I told my son, when he starts business, minimum 51% you should give in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in charity. Nothing less than that. You cannot make Allah a lesser partner in your business. And then keep on increasing as much as you can. So my style of business is different. You require a heart. And if I tell a person, okay, you may be earning even $1,000, will you give 51% in charity? How many will agree? Oh, I require $5,000, I am earning $1,000, how can I give charity? So first you should know how to sacrifice. So my style of business is different. So my style of business is different, so therefore I don't want to teach anyone to do business. I want to teach people to dawah. I inspire them through dawah. And this question itself is, it's a misconception that you have. And believe me, that Allah has given me success in the business is because of my dawah. It is not that my dawa is successful because of the money I have. It is opposite. Because I'm successful in business, because I've sacrificed my life for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is nothing. What we have done is nothing, not even 0.001% and Allah does million times more than what we have done. So my request to the da'i is, please don't indulge. If you have a running business of your parent and if you can do it, alhamdulillah. Better is make a box. If parent has money, okay, buy uh, some property. Well.